Today the scripture is Matthew verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks God. Uh, this, uh, this lady was asked, uh, do you wake up grumpy in the morning? And she says, no, I let him sleep in. <laughs> Let's pray together. Lord, sometimes we wake up grumpy. Sometimes, many times, we wake up happy and looking, anticipating for the day. Lord, right now some of us may be grumpy, some of us may be filled with anticipation. Whatever our situation, Lord, I pray that you anoint this moment as holy and sacred and blessed for you. Speak to every one of us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We're going through the Beatitudes. And what are the Beatitudes? Good attitude to be in. Under the Beatitudes, the word Beatitude comes from the word blessed. Now, what does the word what blessed mean? Now today, as we talked about last week, the word blessed means you, are, uh, you have gifts, you have favor, uh, special things are happening to you. But to understand how to get the blessing, we have to go, I mean the true blessings, we have to go back to the original words. The Hebrew word that's used in today's scripture, blessed, means bend at the knee. Which means if you really want to be blessed in your life, you need to bow down and look for the blessing God wants to give. That's the ultimate blessing. The Latin word used in Jesus' day for blessing comes from the word blood. Because as the Romans would bless things, they would bless it by putting blood, anointing it. And blood meant the life. And you and I say that we're covered with the blood of the Lamb, that means the life of Christ, so that as we are blessed, we bend down on our knees, Lord, give us your life. Give us the blessings that will give us life. And the third word used in Jesus' day, the Greek word, meant it's all-encompassing. That means it's all you'll ever need, every bit you'll ever need. And a lot of times we want blessings other than what God wants to give, but the blessings we really need are those which God gives. Now, today the scripture says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. How many of us like pain? None of us do. We don't like pain. And we get upset when we have pain. But like we talked about two weeks ago, pain is a gift from God. If we do not have pain, we don't know there's a problem. Now, I'm not saying God's causing the pain, but God has given us the ability to feel. And if we don't have that feeling, then we don't realize there's a problem. That's why quadriplegics, many of them will die younger because they don't know they hurt. Their kidneys are failing or, or something's going wrong. Pain is a gift from God. Not only is it a gift from God, it is Jesus saying, I'm here with you. I feel what you feel. Now, I know a lot of us say, not really, but yes. Let's just take one example from the scripture. Go to John chapter, chapter 11. You have the story where Lazarus dies. He comes to Martha and says, I am the resurrection and life. Do you believe this? And she says, well, yes. And then he comes to Mary. Notice what he says, what ha what's said in verse 33. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. And then in verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible, two words, which are? Jesus wept. Now why did Jesus weep? He knew the resurrection. He knew Lazarus was okay. He also knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the grave. So why did he weep? He wept because of his empathy with Mary and Martha. When we hurt, even though Jesus knows those who have died and knows that they're okay and knows that we're going to be okay, he still feels what we feel. We have a very compassionate God. Take it a little step further. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Paul says, but we do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Now he's not saying don't grieve. He say don't grieve as if there's no hope. In other words, you're going to hurt, 
but we know that they are alive. And everyone who's died and come back to life say, you don't have to worry about me, I'm fine. So why are we grieving? Because we hurt. He goes on to talk about, there's the resurrection. Jesus died and rose again. So we don't have to grieve for them. They're fine. We're grieving because we have a loss. One more example. From Isaiah chapter 61. If you remember, Jesus is in the synagogue as he begins his ministry. He's reading the scroll and he reads from this scroll. And what does it say? Remember, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me and has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, and the last phrase. Do you remember this phrase? To comfort all who mourn. He comes to be our holy comforter when we are in pain. So if you have pain, I want you to hear loud and clear Jesus saying, I am with you. And just like you as a child ran to your parents, I hurt, I hurt. When we hurt, you can say, Jesus, I hurt, I hurt. And what's happening is when you do that, you're bowing on your knees. And Jesus is anointing you with his presence. And he'll be the all-encompassing to provide the healing. Now, how does the healing take place? Well, it's a fact, and there are variations of this, but it's a fact that the first step, there are five stages. First stage is that I don't believe this is happening. I, I don't believe I'm being cut from the team. I don't believe you're firing me. I don't believe, honey, you want a divorce. I, I just talked to the person last night. I don't believe the person died. I, I don't believe that I can't run like I used to. I don't believe it, this is called, I don't believe it's happening. This is a gift from God. Because if, what it is, is a buffer that gives us a chance to take a step back and comprehend what's going on. Because psychologically, it could be so overwhelming, it can just knock us for a loop. And we're going to get knocked for a loop anyway, but it's a gift from God, a buffer. The second stage is called the why stage. Why do you want a divorce? Why did you have this accident? Doctor, why didn't you catch this sooner? God, why are you doing this to me? Oh, why? We ask, why do you want to break up? Why did I fail? And, and well, this is a gift from God from two angles. First of all, anger is a motivator. If there is still a chance to save us from the loss, it motivates us to do something about it if it's not too late. But if it is too late, the second thing it does, it moves us closer to the fifth stage of healing. And that means we're not in denial anymore, but we're getting closer to accepted. The third stage is, what if? Uh, God, what if we did this? Uh, doctor, what if we try this? Honey, what if we go to counseling? Teacher, what if I do this for extra credit? Coach, what if you give me another chance? Uh, honey, what if we have another chance instead of breaking up? Two things are going here. First of all, if there's a chance, if there's a chance that the loss can be averted, Jesus is there giving us hope to try everything possible. But if it is too late, if it can't be changed, it's way on repairing, such as the person has already died, then it has moved us to the third stage, closer to healing. Just like you get a cut, there's bleeding, there's clotting, there's scabbing. Scabbing's the third stage. It's closer to the healing. The third stage of what if is closer to healing. The fourth stage is a painful stage. It's, I'm not ready yet. You can't deny that it happened, or it's too late. There's no way to change things, but I'm just not ready. 
I'm not ready to go on living without this person in my life. I'm not ready to go on without this job. I'm not ready to go on. Uh, I, I'm just not ready. Now this is a gift from Christ in the sense that this gives us a chance to put our feet on the ground and begin to ask, what am I going to do now? And this is a chance to get our bearings as to the next stage in life. And this is where we really are bowing down before Christ saying, I need your help. I need your presence. I need everything you can give me. I need your blessing, Lord. And it's finally the fourth stage to the healing. You see, after the scabbing on a cut, it takes time for the tissue to heal, but eventually the tissue heals and there's a scar. When we come to the fifth stage, it's like the scar. It doesn't change anything in the past, but we've come to the point I look at all the widows and widowers who've gone through this before. Jesus, you've helped them. And you can help me again. You can help me too. And look at all those who've gone through divorce. Jesus, you helped them. And I guess you're going to help me get through this too. You look through all the property you lost in the fire. Jesus, you helped them. I know you're going to help me through. You look at those who've gone, whatever the loss, Jesus, I know you're with me. And healing takes place. Now, I, I want to be very clear. Healing is not that simple. When it comes to a cut, yeah, you can see the progress and all that stuff. But with emotional loss, whatever the loss, it's messy. For today, <laughs> you may be at the point of acceptance. It's fine. Tomorrow, you may be back to, I don't believe it happened. Or the next day, you may be at, what if we had done this instead? Or the next day, you're angry again. It, you go back and forth. Like, Dad died in 1995. And at times like this morning, I feel the pain again. You know, you don't, emotions are just so messy. And relationships are messy. So it's not that clear cut. But the one thing that is constant and all of this is that Christ is with us straight through the entire healing process. Um, one of the classic, classic examples is Jesus himself. He's on the cross. And of course, everyone says the one phrase they remember from him on the cross is what? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What's going on there? Scholars tell us that He's really singing Psalm 22. And of course, Psalms, as you know, is the songbook of Jesus' day. And in Psalm 22, it begins with, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. By night, but you find no rest. It's kind of like you have... Say you and your girlfriend and your wife have your song. That's a song that reminds you of that relationship. Or you may have a song for something else. You know, you, it, be, it strums the heartstrings of your soul. Well, Jesus is crying out to God because I am in pain, he is saying through the song. But notice verse 3. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you, our ancestors, trusted, they, they trusted, and you delivered them. So, he goes from pain at the same time, I'm trusting you, God, to be with me while I'm hurting. And then he goes back to the pain. But I am a worm, not human, scorned by others, despised by the people. Go down to verse 14. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. I, it is melted within my breast. My tongue is, sticks to my... Uh, Paul, my jaws. I've got this pain, God. But then he comes right back in the song, verse 27, 22. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. you catch that? He lives what he teaches. I am with you in your pain. 
I trust God in my pain. And that's where the blessing. Blessed are you when you mourn. Remember, to get the blessing, you bow down before God. Don't expect God to do it the way you want it done. Just trust that God will do what's best for you and me. And allow Christ to do it. Allow Christ to do it. And look, we have communion today. In communion, Jesus, the night before he died, took the bread and broke it. And he said, look, I'm broken. That's going to be painful. It is going to be painful. Understand, I know what pain is like. And yet I trust God. Because through my brokenness, I'm going to save you. And I'm going to give you me. The blessings of me to anoint you through the bread. But also anoint you with the blood. The blood of blessing. To help you have your healing. Cleansing of sin. Cleansing of doubts. Cleansing of whatever. Including the anointing of healing of pain. Will you pray with me? Lord, I don't know what's, what pain each individual has in this room. You know it, though. You've got the whole world in your hands. You know everything about us, Lord. And you know that you want to be with us in the pain, and you want to provide healing. So, Lord, I pray you help us open us ourselves to you. In just a second, we're going to receive communion, Lord. As we do, help us not just receive the bread and the juice. Help us to receive your presence as we bow down, kneel at the communion rail. To receive the anointing of you through communion. To receive you all that we need to go forward in life. As you do, Lord, be that holy physician, the holy comforter, the holy guide that leads us out of darkness into light. And to help us go forward trusting you. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen.